Hi, this is me, there's Marie, the soldier of Mary. So I wanted to do a final video on the subject of St. Jose Maria and Garabandal, and more particularly on Opus Dei and Garabandal, because as I was researching the subject of St. Jose Maria and Garabandal, I started thinking to myself that really, although Opus Dei has distanced himself from the apparitions and they, they don't have any pilgrimages there, as far as I'm aware, and they have very limited uh, support or encouragement of Garabandal, there are possible connections, possible things that, that Opus Dei could, could hang on to, if they wish to, in the apparitions of Our Lady at Garabandal. Uh, there's a number of, of little things. First of all, uh, most importantly, is the emphasis of Our Lady on being good in your daily life. She was talking to a group of children and she tells them in the first message, first of all, we must be very good. The importance of even children living according to a rule of life, living according to a program that would ensure that they were model children in their family, model children in studies, model children in prayer. I have had quite a bit of acquaintance with Opus Dei. One of the things I have really uh, liked about the, the uh, prelature is their emphasis that holiness is quite possible for children, you know, children, uh, especially teenagers. And they challenge teenagers. One of the priests that I've got to know in England has produced this grid, uh, which has a list of different spiritual exercises. And he gives it to the teenagers in his Opus Dei school. And they are encouraged to tick off the spiritual exercises that they've done each day. And these include essentials, the daily rosary, daily meditation, daily spiritual reading, Angelus, spiritual communions, going to mass. They challenge the children to live, uh, to sanctify themselves and to take their interior life seriously. And that's something that Our Lady seemed to do at Garabandal. She encouraged the children to take their spiritual lives seriously. So, for instance, as I've mentioned in my video on the winter in Garabandal, Our Lady encouraged them to get up early to pray the rosary, to go down to the church and pray the rosary there. And they did that. Um, she encouraged them also to daily mass, daily holy communion even. She encouraged them to make spiritual communions. She encouraged them in many aspects of the spiritual life. Basically, the same things I've just mentioned that that Opus Dei priest gave as uh, in his grid of different activities that a teenager or any Catholic should be doing. Our Lady was doing that to the children at Garabandal. Second thought on the apparitions and their link to Opus Dei spirituality is sanctification through daily work and the obligations of one state in life and in case of these children they did a little bit of school but they also spent a lot of the time helping in the harvest in the fields and in the case of Mary Lowley helping in her dad's tavern and shop and Our Lady encouraged them to do these things um, with great love and great dedication and we see quite a lot of videos of people who have recorded the children doing these things i'm surprised that they don't chip in and help them to be honest they're quite happy to let the kids these young girls do all this work with the rake i'm sure they could have helped a little bit um rather than just standing there with a the video camera so and, and part of this is the fact that we are told that when the children or that in spite of the fact that children did these uh, great ecstasies of prayer and were called in the night to go and pray and often were praying all night, they still had a supernatural strength to go about their daily work with the same keenness, uh, the same ability as, as if they hadn't had this intense spiritual experience. So Our Lady in her apparitions is kind of giving them the force strength to live their uh, daily obligations, to be faithful to their state in life. 
Linked to this, we see, as I mentioned in a previous video, the fact that Our Lady was happy for Mary Loli to get up, uh, get up a little bit later to say her morning rosary on account of the fact that she'll be up late cleaning in the tavern. And then Our Lady seemed to obey the wishes of the parents. If the parents were forbidding the children to go to apparitions or have apparitions, they didn't have them. There was a obedience and Our Lady encouraged them to be obedient to their parents. And obviously for a child, that is part of sanctification uh, in living your uh, vocation at that moment, which as a child is going to be in part obedience to your parents. Now, lastly, in terms of spirituality of Opus Dei, is the emphasis on the spiritual director. You may not realize this, but from quite early on, the children appreciate that they need spiritual directors and they take on spiritual directors. In particular, we have a lot of documentary evidence of Conchita taking a spiritual director, this priest up at Comillas, uh, the seminary there, he becomes her spiritual director. And the others have associations, special associations with priests. And throughout the rest of their lives, they have continued in seeking spiritual direction, which is definitely something that Opus Dei emphasizes. I think that, um, I think that's a real, definitely something that Opus Dei emphasizes. Um, before Opus Dei, maybe lay people weren't so encouraged to have spiritual directors or lay people that were taking their interior life seriously. That's not entirely the case. And often this is the thing with Opus Dei. A lot of the uh, innovations of Opus Dei are really exaggerations because uh, if you read the Legion of Mary handbook, for instance, there's a section on spiritual director that encourages members to have a spiritual director. And the Legion of Mary handbook um, has certainly written uh, before Opus Dei comes to be well known. And again, Francois de Sales, uh, his spirit of direction in Introduction to the Devout Life is to a laywoman. So there's certainly Saint Alphonsus, you know, he's talking about it as well, the importance of the spirit of director. But bringing it to large numbers and bringing it to large numbers of people in Spain, Opus Dei certainly does that. So Garabandau could be, has the ability of being the poster child apparition of Opus Dei. There's enough material there for it to be embraced by Opus Dei, especially if they chose to discover that in actual fact St. Josemaria was there, then it really could be great for them. But the big thing that obviously is holding this back is the fact that, that Opus Dei is not interested in promoting an apparition that does not have a 100% seal of approval of the local bishop and of the Vatican. Opus Dei does not, does not want to be more Roman than Rome, more Catholic than the Pope. They want to be, uh, certainly in its uh, modern era, post Josemaria, I don't know about when he was alive, um, they certainly don't want to connect themselves to something that is fringe. They want to be mainstream, but mainstream, ordinary and holy. That's kind of the image that they want to have, and professional, and maybe... Um, maybe some of the stuff at Garabandau, those ecstatic trances and marches, maybe that isn't normal, maybe that's uh, not professional, not normal enough for them. Uh, they want to have a normal, robust Catholicism. Um, that seems to be part of their, their image. So that's just some thoughts on Opus Dei and Garabandau. I hope you found this mini-series linking Saint Josemaria, who I do admire. I, I admire him. I've benefited so much from his little book, The Way, uh, when I was a when I was a teenager, and I've enjoyed some of his other books, and I've had Opus Dei spirit directors in the past. I'm not against Opus Dei at all. I hope that you've enjoyed some of this uh, these explorations on the link between Saint Josemaria and Garabandau. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.